Good afternoon, everyone. What I'd like for you to do is take a couple of seconds to look at these images on the screen. For those that have seen the movie Lone Survivor, these are images from that intense firefight. Or if you've read the book, you understand there was an intense firefight. If you haven't read the book or seen the movie, I'm not going to ruin it for you. Okay, don't worry about that. Just understand there was an intense firefight. And using your own combat experience, or just by the facial expressions you're seeing on these images, what thoughts or emotions can you imagine or did you experience during your deployment? Fear. Excuse me? Fear. Fear, okay. Uh, determination. Determination. They look scared, they look afraid. They look scared, they look afraid. So in our current operating, operating environment, which could be Syria, we're on the brink of possibly going back to Iraq. It's important that we look to the left and the right of our brothers in arms and our sisters in arms, kind of like the Navy SEALs did during that intense operation, and tell each other what, no matter what, I can fight. We talked about looking scared and afraid, so it's okay to be scared and afraid. But it's about, again, telling your brothers and sisters in arms, hey, I'm afraid, but I can fight. Now, how do we do that? We do that by improving our resilience. My name is Sergeant First Class Soto. I will be your instructor for this unclassified briefing on resilience training. We just had our suicide prevention briefing. This goes hand in hand with suicide prevention. So this will also go hand in hand with our follow-on briefings on resilience training. And I'll get on a little bit later as to how it follows on to our suicide prevention briefing. With any great Army training, what do we have? A TLO. TLO. Cool. So, somebody please read our TLO. Action. Define resilience and why it is beneficial to the soldier and the Army. Condition. Classroom environment. Standard. Be able to describe the importance of resilience. Thank you, Sergeant. We always hear what mission first, and the mission is mission for the Army. But resilience, if you look at the first, the action, it's also for what? For the soldier. So keep that in mind. Resilience training is for the beneficial, the ar beneficial for the Army but it's also beneficial for the soldier. Administrative data, safety requirements, if you enter or exit the room, be careful, there's a step down. Risk assessment is low. Environmental considerations, if you recycle, which we all should, please do. Fort Knox is big on recycling, so any water bottles, please put in the recycle bin as you exit. And evaluation, I know what you're asking yourself. Sergeant Soto, is there gonna be a test? Yes, there will be a test. However, it's a verbal test, so no need to have a pencil or paper out, so it will be a verbal test. So here's our agenda. We're going to define resilience, which is our TLO, the role of emotions in resilience. Everyday resilience is a concept I'm going to explain that we all practice. Resilience myths and facts. We're going to talk about six MRT competencies, and we're going to do our check on learning. So what's the bottom line up front? Let me have a volunteer to please read this slide. You can enhance your resilience and effectiveness as a warrior by using skills that build the competencies that contribute to resilience. Ties into the Army's effort to prevent suicide. So I talked about earlier that this ties into our suicide prevention class we just had. So there's everyday stressors in life, correct? So what are some everyday stressors that we have in life that can lead to someone thinking about suicide? Financial situations. Financial situations, absolutely. Family problems. Excuse me? Family problems. Family problems, absolutely. Health okay. problems. Health problems, work issues. So the Army is trying to focus us to understand resilience so we don't get to that level of thinking of suicide. So that's how this ties into our previous classes. So the bottom line in front is a week in what? What's the key word that's been underlined? Enhance. Enhance. And what's another word for enhance? Practice. Yeah, we can practice our skills, right? Better, By using skills, they build the competencies that contribute to resilience. So we need to practice our skills. So how do you become a better shooter on the field, on the range? How do you get better at PT? What do you have to do? Practice. Go to practice. Well, same thing with resilience training. You can't listen to Sergeant Soto's briefing and say, I am a resilient person now because I listen to Sergeant Soto's awesome briefing. You have to practice the skills that you're going to learn today and in our follow-on briefings on resilience. So keep that in mind. All these classes tie in together, and we have to practice these skills, much like we do our PT tests and our weapons qual. So what is resilience? Let me have a volunteer read the first bullet, please. A resilient individual is one who is willing to take calculated necessary risks and to capitalize on opportunities. So let me give you a brief story that might explain the first bullet. In 2003, I was a team leader of a six-man civil affairs team attached to a special operations team in Eastern Asadabad, and I struck an IED. Uh, my OIC came to speak to me as I was in the hospital bed, the makeshift hospital. And I knew if I got medevaced, it would leave the team to a five-man team, which is pretty much inoperable as a civil affairs team. So my OIC says, I, I understand you're under a lot of Motrin, which is what the Army always says, very cool. And he says, uh, we've got to go out on another mission. 
in two days and the men need you. The boys, the kids are afraid. And what he meant was the PFCs and the specialists and young soldiers were afraid to go on another mission because their NCOIC just struck an IED. So I told my OIC, you know what, sir? I'll go on that mission in two days. Not only will I go on the mission, I'll be in the first vehicle. I didn't realize at the time that I was practicing resilience, but I did it because for me, it was a calculated necessary risk to capitalize an opportunity. Not the opportunity to show off, but the opportunity to show my troops that I'm there with you. I'm scared, I'm afraid, but I can fight. So that's my experience with resilience and how I think this bullet relates to me is taking that calculated necessary risk. What does your army do when we go to the field, when you go to the range? What do you have to fill out? The risk assessment. The risk assessment, right? The risk assessment worksheet. So in essence, what you're doing, practice, practicing resilience, is you're doing a risk assessment internally. Now, I didn't sit there and say, sir, hold on, we're going on that mission, let me write down my risk assessment. No. I did it in my head knowing I was doing it. You know, I've got to take into account the risk. Is it worth it? Absolutely. So keep that in mind. It's all about that risk assessment that we do internally. Somebody please read the second bullet. Resilience is the ability to grow and thrive in the face of challenges and bounce back from adversity. So bouncing back from adversity. What could be adversity? Is it only the enemy? Is it only the enemy combatants? What else could be adversity in this context? They're very similar to the things we talked about earlier. Okay, the stresses in, in life. In, in life, okay, work. What else did we say earlier? Remember that? What did we say earlier? Yeah, work, financial, work, finance, uh, family issues, health. Yeah. And what do we do every six months in the Army? APFT. APFT, right? And what's the minimum standard in APFT? 60%. But what do we do? We don't strive for that 60%, right? What do we do? We grow and thrive on that. I'm going to go out there, I'm going to do as many push ups as I can in those two minutes so I get muscle failure. I'm going to run as hard and as fast as I can that two mile run. That's growing and thriving. It's telling ourselves, you know what, I'm gonna go out there, I'm gonna do the best that I can in a challenge, in adversity. So keep that in mind, adversity is not just when you're deployed, when you're in uniform, okay? It's all that we do. Now on the bottom here, there's a graphic depiction of a tennis ball and an egg. What do you think I'm trying to say there? Tennis ball, you bounce back, and with an egg, one and done. Absolutely, so what do we wanna be? Tennis ball. ball. Tennis ball. Now, if I drop a tennis ball right now, it's going to bounce, right? Is it going to bounce pretty high? Probably not. Probably not. So what do I have to do if I want it to bounce higher? Get a little force behind it. You got to have more force behind it. Same thing with resilience. If you only have to practice a little bit of resilience today, it might be a little bit of resilience today. But if tomorrow I have a harder day or next week is a harder week, what do you have to do? You got to practice even more. Okay. So keep that in mind. Just like a tennis ball, sometimes you need more force. Sometimes you got to practice harder. Okay? But we definitely don't want to be the A. We don't want to break. So emotions, what is the role of emotions, uh, excuse me, emotion regulation and resilience? So some people think, Sergeant Soto MRT is touchy-feely, that's not for me, I'm a hard charger, and that's not it at all. Resilience training is not about suppressing your emotions or denying them. It's not about saying, look, I'm hardcore, I'm a combat vet, I don't need this. It's about knowing your emotions and when to display them at the appropriate time. So in 2003, when my OIC asked me to go on that mission, guess what I did when he left the room? I sat there and cried because I was afraid. Is it going to happen again? Am I going to be lucky the second time around? And it's okay to cry. It's okay to have those emotions. The only thing that resilience is training us is having at the appropriate time. Now, if I were to go to my soldiers, soldiers were going on a mission tomorrow. I really don't want to go. I don't know what's going to happen. Well, guess how they would have felt? Oh, actually, yeah. yeah, absolutely. I don't want to go. Really. I'm not, if you don't want to go, I don't want to go. So keep that in mind. It's about having the appropriate emotional reaction at the appropriate time. Look, soldiers, we're going out. We're going to do the mission, mission, mission first, et cetera, et cetera. You go behind closed doors and cry and pray, do whatever it is that you do that makes you feel more resilient. But keep that in mind. It's about the proper emotions at the proper time and place. So I talked about earlier everyday resilience. Let me give you an example of what everyday resilience is that most of us already practice. Somebody please read this bullet. You're struggling with employee issues at civilian work. The S3 and Command Sergeant Major are on you about SSD. One of your kids is at home sick and you manage to qualify expert on the qualification range. So think back to your most previous battle assembly. You show up, in great mood. Sergeant Major says, sorry, come here for a second. And there you go. Did you complete your SSD? Well, Sergeant Major, my cat car wasn't working, et cetera, et cetera. I don't want to hear it. You need to get it done, and that is it. So how did your BA already start? Bad. Bad. 
Okay. You get a text message or a phone call. Son or daughter is sick. I can't believe you're not here. I know you had duty. What time are you getting off? Spouse, no idea. I'm going to the range. Fine. Now, now the spouse is upset. Household, household six is upset. Now what? Go to the range. I'm tired. I didn't bring enough water. But you know what? I'm going to do the best that I can. I'm going to call for an expert out there. That's everyday resilience. No matter what you're facing, you're telling yourself, I'm not giving in. I got to handle these issues and I will, but right now, mission first is for me to call for an expert. Nobody told you you have to call for an expert. You told yourself, I'm going to call for an expert. So you see, that's everyday resilience that we do. We don't even know it. Somebody please read my second example. You've been under a lot of stress lately. Your spouse is starting a new job. Your kid is having a hard time at school and your instructor that you're brief goes on. Same thing. Anytime you get in front of the podium, we're instructing, there's stress going on behind the curtains, correct? At home, at work, but well, what do we have to do? Do the best that we can. So instructor of the year competition, instructor of, of the battle assembly for whatever it is, you do the best you can. That's everyday resilience knowing I've got issues back home, but I'm gonna give it my all in this briefing. Cool? Cool. So here we have strength, skills, and abilities. Somebody please read this slide. Name some strength, skills, and abilities that you believe are critical for resilience and how did they help you? So take a couple of seconds to read that slide again. If someone wants to share an experience or something that they think works for them, uh, please do. Sorry, Yes, Yeah, sorry. So no, uh, here about a year back, I had a daughter that it got hooked on drugs, and mm -hmm. me and my wife ended up getting uh, custody of the three kids, and we ended up having to raise them, you know, because it's not the kids' fault that the parents did what they did, you know, but we took control of the situation. And it was rough, but we're making it through. Wow. You know, Fern, I appreciate you sharing that uh, with us. It's definitely you taking the responsibility and knowing that, hey, I can fight, I'm not gonna quit. Anyone else wanna share an experience? Well, that, speaking of those kind of situations, it, it reminds me, you know, back probably about six, seven years ago, I had a motorcycle accident. And in that motorcycle accident, I almost died twice. I wasn't supposed to walk again. I spent six months out of work. And through that, I had to work my way back to where, you know, not only do I walk again, but I can still do my job and come back. Because I'm an AGR, so if I, look, if I can't walk, I can't do this, that, that's my whole thing. I can have it with my family and everything. So. Well, you know, I don't know how you got through it, but I, I did a lot of praying through a uh, situation, you know, what my, my wife's going through. It. Yeah, I, I tried that, but I'm not wholly religious. And so to me, it was just, I just had that attitude that, I, you know, I just refused to quit. I won't. I just absolutely refuse. I, it won't beat me down. I'm just going to keep going. You know, and, and I, I appreciate, sorry, you know, Irish being honest, saying, you know, basically praying didn't work for me. So I had an example here. So for sorry, Hinton, praying worked for you. Yes. And you had that drive for, I'm just not going to quit. I'm not going to stop. So you see two different individuals, brothers in arms, two different issues, life-changing issues. However, they dealt with it by being what? By being resilient. So I don't know if you knew this. Uh, but you were practicing some of the warrior ethos, and I'm going to show you in a bit how you did that. But also physical fitness, you know, relieving stress, maybe sitting out on the porch, drinking some water works for you. And get rid getting rid of why questions. What that means is this. So what kind of car do you drive, Sergeant in Arishman, if you don't mind me asking? I've got a Nissan Maxima. Okay, Nissan Maxima. Now, now watch this. So if I were to say, hey, why do you drive a Nissan Maxima? <laughs> okay. It's a nice car. <laughs> Absolutely. And uh, so if I were to say, what are the best features of that Nissan Maxima? Uh, it's got a lot of power. It, it, you hit the gas and it goes. It's nice and luxurious. It's got great leather seating. Did y'all pick up on what happened when I asked him in the what way? He kept going. Yeah, he, he was positive. Yeah. He kept going on about his car. So you see, when you ask, no matter how much I smile, hey, why do you drive this car? Mm -hmm. It's that, okay, making me feel uncomfortable. You kind of get defensive. So getting rid of the why questions is it's not necessarily just flat out on using, but think about when you use the why questions, it's going to drive somebody to possibly get defensive. So instead, what do you like about this? My soldiers in my reserve unit, every time they see me, hey, sorry, I'm sorry, why did you, oh, I'm sorry, what did you, and they laugh about it, but it's funny, and I know that resilience is working for them, and they're practicing the skills. So keep that in mind if you leave the briefing with nothing, use what questions. Thank you, thank you for sharing about your car. So earlier, Sir Hinton talked about what? He had a, a family issue, right? Anybody remember what he, what he was talking about? 
grandkids. Absolutely. So having to take care of grandkids, wouldn't that possibly fall into this one? I will never leave a fallen comrade, right? And what did Sergeant Ashman talk about earlier? Motorcycle accident. Right, and what did he say? It wasn't praying that kept him going, but it was what? I'll never quit. I will never quit. And isn't that one of our warrior ethos? So you see, resilience is built in our warrior ethos, and we're practicing it, not even know it. Now it's just been labeled as resilience. So what are some myths and facts about resilience? Well, we already talked about never show emotion is a myth. It's not about that. It's about what to your emotions? Regulate. Regulate them. Absolutely. Remember that? Talk about regulating at the appropriate time, at the appropriate place. Now, how many of us feel that we have to handle everything on our own? Right? So our major's always on us. OIC is on us. You got to do this. Go to your accountants. Go to USSD. But what do we fail to do sometimes as individuals, as soldiers, as leaders? Ask for help. Ask for help. Absolutely. And that's a myth that we have to handle everything on our own. It's all about asking for help when we think we need it. Some people believe you have it or you don't. And that's not true. What did we talk about in the very early slides? You have to do what with these skills? Practice, practice them. Yeah. So that tells me it's not whether you have it or you're not. It's whether you practice it or you don't. So keep that in mind. We always have to practice, 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 especially with these resiliency skills. So here are the six competencies that I'm going to cover. Self-awareness is about really being open and curious. So, so what's this MRT thing all about? Let me, let, me, let me sit in your briefing and let me understand it. Let me practice it. So try it. Understand your thoughts and emotions and behaviors. Because we want what? Positive what? Behaviors and thoughts. Thoughts and emotions, right? Remember that. Positive thoughts and emotions. Self-regulation is about stopping counterproductive thinking. Express those emotions what? Appropriately. Appropriately. Does it say to suppress them or deny them? No. Absolutely not. Optimism is what? Very, very first one, what does that say? Negative feedback, fight it. Fight the negativity bias. So the negativity bias says this, that we tend to focus on negative, right? You watch the news, what's going on, everything's negative, right? And what do we normally, your friends call you, why does he feel that way? Why does she? That's negativity bias. But if you say, well, what makes you feel so bad about that? It may bring the positive out of them. I showed you a perfect example with the car example, right? So now when you leave this classroom, you can try that. What questions as opposed to why questions? Because that fights negativity bias. Always maintain hope. Confidence in yourself and your what? Team. In your team. Mental agility, take other perspectives. Be willing to try new strategies. If you cook an egg and you burn it, you're gonna cook it the same way tomorrow? No, you're gonna try something different, right? So try something different, try resilience, let's see if it works. I guarantee you, you'll see that it will. Your strengths of character, Basically is what? Demonstrating what? An I am strong attitude. Have faith in one's character strengths, your talents, and your abilities. Connection. Build strong relationships. Finally, be willing to what? <coughs> Ask, for Ask for help. So here's our big test. Okay, check on learning. Are you ready? All right. Can soldiers and family members improve their level of resilience? Yes. That's true. Good job. Cool. What best represents resilience, a tennis ball or an egg, and why? Think about that. The tennis ball, because it always bounces back. My job here is done. Cool. Should you suppress your emotions or be aware of them? Be aware of them. And know how to what with them? Regulate. Absolutely. Regulate them. So in summary, we've defined resilience, which was our TLO, the role of emotions and resilience. We talked about everyday resilience. Resilience myths and facts. We talked about the six MRT competencies. We did our check on learning. So in conclusion, what did Sergeant Lay say earlier about the image that he saw? He said they look what scared and afraid. It's okay to be scared and afraid, but ultimately you want to look left and right to your brothers and sisters in arms. And what do you want to say to them? I can fight. That's what resilience is about. Being able to say I can fight. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes my unclassified briefing. Do I have any questions? Thank you very much.